Let us teach the New Testament. First Epistle of John, Lesson 5, 1 John 2, verses 18 through 29. In this fifth of 15 lessons on the New Testament book of 1 John, we shall deal with these 10 matters. Children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you all have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he made to us, eternal life. I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. But the anointing that you received from him abides in you, and you have no need that anyone should teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about everything, and is true, and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. At 1 John 2 verse 18, from the 4th century, some manuscripts read, The Antichrist. In verse 20, from the 5th century, some manuscripts read, All things, instead of, You all. At verse 27, a 4th and a 9th century scribe mistakenly wrote, Gift, Charisma, instead of, Anointing, Chrisma. Instead of his anointing, one ninth century manuscript reads his gift. Two fourth century manuscripts read his spirit. And from the fifth century, a few manuscripts read the same anointing. At verse 29, from the fifth century, some manuscripts read, If you saw, edeta, in place of, if you know, edete. It is hard to know which reading was original. First John 2.18 starts the second major division in the structure of 1 John. Christians in every generation must face up to their adversaries. This spiritual conflict helps us to maintain our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. John and first century Christians talked about an anointing that they had received it from God. Christians normally take this anointing to mean the Holy Spirit. Jesus said many false Christs would arise after him. 
Paul called one of these the man of sin, an adversary of the Messiah who would appear in the last days. Originally, the word holy meant the quality possessed by things and persons that could approach a divinity. It means being dedicated or consecrated to the service of God. The reference to the Holy One is God Himself. As used in the Greek Bible, an hour can be any point of time or an occasion for some event. In 1 John, the hour is this present age of the world's existence. Bible translators and interpreters must pay attention to Greek nouns and participles that have a definite article, the little word the. Greek has no indefinite article, a. When a Greek noun has an article, you must discern what it means. Sometimes the articles with a noun means that it is the same noun mentioned earlier. In 1 John 2.20, anointing has no article, but in verse 27 it does, referring back to the same anointing. The article may come with a noun that a writer and readers know very well. In 1 John, the truth always refers to the truth that Jesus taught, or to Jesus himself. The article with a person may identify that person as the only one. In 1 John 2.22, Jesus is the Christ, in a way that no other person can be. The article used with a participle usually means a kind of person. In verse 22, the liar means anyone who is a liar, and the one who confesses means all those who confess. When a Greek noun has no article, you must discern what it means. The noun may be definite with an article or without. In verse 18, John says, Antichrist is coming. This refers to a particular evil man that the apostles warned would arise one day. A noun without an article may refer to a trait or quality of such a noun. In verse 18, the Greek says, It is last hour, meaning that the present time is like the future last hour, because there are already many antichrists. Now, only teach about Greek grammar if your learners are able to understand it and are eager to learn. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you teachable ideas and summaries from the passage. For example, six points about the Antichrists, nine descriptions of real Christians, all that the passage teaches about the anointing, and a brief chronology of the end of days. In the future last hour, the Antichrist will come, then Jesus Christ will appear, and Christians will have confidence before him, and they will live forever. Instead of just reading or talking about all these points, have learners form tiny groups. Have each group read a few verses of 1 John 2, 18-29, looking for points about a topic. After a few minutes, ask someone in each tiny group to tell two or three items that the group members found. Thank everyone for their cooperation. Of course, it is not necessary to find or to report all of the items. 1 John 2, 18-29 touches upon four historical Christian doctrines. The Anointing when the eternal Son of God had become human and was baptized with water, the Father in heaven anointed him with his Holy Spirit. Jesus later promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to his followers. And to this day, God anoints all real Christians with the same Holy Spirit. The Antichrist. Before Jesus returns, the devil will empower an evil man to do miracles to deceive unbelievers, and to persecute Christians. This man of sin 
will gain political power over nations and will control their economies. When the Lord Jesus returns, he will destroy this man and will throw the devil into a deep pit. The Father and the Son The one true God has existed forever, still exists, and will exist forever as the Father and as the Son. In some languages we say the parent and the child. The Father and the Son together created and reign over the world and over all living beings. The Father remains invisible God over all creation, whilst the Son has become the man Jesus within creation. Christians believe in one God, worshipping the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. The New Birth Jesus taught, you must be born again. He explained that this new birth is accomplished by God's Holy Spirit. When sinners repent and put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, God sends his Holy Spirit into them. From that moment, they become God's adopted children, and they begin to lead a new life. John calls this action, born of God. Other apostles call it regeneration. In small gatherings, after reading together 1 John 2, 18 through 29, pose such queries as these. What have you learned from this passage about God? About Jesus? About our adversaries? About the anointing? Whilst preaching, teaching, or leading, recommend ways in which to apply the passage or put it into practice. For example, identify anti-Christian teachers in your city and on the internet. Have seekers and believers bring their anti-Christian books and amulets, then burn these in a bonfire. Pray to the Father through the Son, thanking God for giving you the anointing that teaches you the truth. Remind Christians that this anointing does not give them power or authority to change truth or to create new truth. Ask everyone to teach others this week that the one true God is both the Father and the Son. Remind everyone that Jesus will return one day and to live in a way that will not bring shame. Please download the document for this lesson at onejohn.cura.download. Read five times 1 John 3 verses 1 through 10 before you view the next video lesson. Please leave comments or queries or write to me at the download site. I shall try to reply to you by email or in a video.